Hello and welcome to day one of International Conflicts with me, the event director, Jack Newey. I am joined by Stephanie Newton from Marketing Manchester for a quick interview about the city and the latest development. So welcome, Steph. Thank you. It's good to be here. With us at the show. The show's absolutely rammed so far, so it's looking really good. So let's dive in to a little bit more about Manchester and what's going on. Talk to me about the latest developments in the city, how this is tying into the city's appeal and uh, making it a, a, a real destination for event organisers. Okay, so there's been a huge amount of development that's gone on in Manchester, both pre-pandemic and also post-pandemic. Um, so we've got a number of new large scale venues that are imminently opening. So we've got Aviva Studios, which will be one of the largest cultural venues in Europe. We've got Co-op Live, which is imminently opening, um, and that will have, uh, will then have, Manchester will then have the top two um, arenas in the UK in terms of capacity. Um, we've got, we've been investing in historic venues um, to really get that Manchester legacy piece across. Um, so we've restored the iconic New Century Hall, where Jimi Hendrix has played in the past, and that's become a, a real event venue. The Rolling Stones have played there, Tina Turner. Um, we've also um, revamped the Band on the Wall, which is Manchester's oldest iconic music venue. So there's a real focus on cultural venues and music venues, which harks back to Manchester's developing cultural scene and also the, the past cultural scene. We've got a number of new hotels that are opening. So Manchester already has 15,000 bedrooms um, in the city centre. And we've got uh, Treehouse, which is opening its second site in the UK, um, and that opens in April this year. We, Malmaison Manchester Deansgate just opened in February, um, and that's opposite the Town Hall. We've got Molly's and Soho House, which is opening um, towards the latter half of the year. Soho House is the uh, first one in the north of England, um, so that's a really good one. We've got lots of government bodies that have relocated to the UK, Department for Business and Trade, DCMS, which allows us to really lobby and get under the skin of, of local government and, and national government as to why Manchester is the place for events. Um, and we're also building a series of new innovation districts. So we have Atom Valley um, for advanced manufacturing. We've got uh, the Oxford Corridor, which is the home of life sciences and research. We've got ID Manchester around digital and tech, and of course, developments at Media City for broadcasting and digital. <laughs> That is a lot of yeah, take a breath. That is a lot of developments going on, yeah. and I mean that's amazing. And let's let's try and make it um, a bit more practical for event planners. So what does this mean? What kind of events can you run? How does this um, change the the sort of range and the landscape of events that Manchester can hold? Uh, what are some of the unique features as well that, that the city holds now? It's got all of these developments coming that that really will appeal to event organisers. So already, you know, we we um, market Manchester as a um, walkable city for event planners. It's really well connected in terms of an international airport, train stations, and motorway links. Um, but what these venues do is it gives a it gives a distinction. So if people aren't really looking for um, a white box and you could be anywhere. You, event organisers will get a real flavour of Manchester's history and future in using some of these venues that are coming uh, into, into, the, into the fall. And in terms of the innovation districts, it means that we become a real sort of um, leader in knowledge and um, thought, thought leadership and, and research. Manchester will be at the forefront of research in those frontier sectors where we really want to align uh, conferences with so that people can come and delegates can come and see you know what Manchester's doing in that in that field so obviously is the city rich in heritage and culture how does this play in into the event landscape do you think well what it means is because we have done an awful lot of work around the cultural and, uh, and heritage uh, moment um, it means that we are attracting um, conferences and events from different sectors so we very recently had Chanel in Manchester for their uh, fashion event back in December, which really put Manchester on the map from a fashion point of view. So we're getting now a lot of uh, inquiries from that, that sort of sector. Um, and then with uh, Aviva Studios and Co-op Live, it's a different dimension. You, in, in, so you can have an event in a very different place that you might not have really thought, oh, I can use that for an event. Um, and it just, it just gives the delegates something unique that they can, that they can take away with them. So every city faces its challenges. 
um, and there's obviously barriers for the event organizer to overcome um, in order to take their event there. I mean, from my point of view, um, obviously a lot of our events are in London. We have run events outside London. We've run them in Manchester as well. Um, obviously, the first thought of an event organizer is to sort of take a step back and, and think of potentially all the barriers of, of moving it there and the things that probably could go wrong. Yeah, so yeah. What, what the city, what is the city doing to sort of overcome these? And then how could you sort of ease the mind a little bit of event organizers on how you're uh, breaking down these barriers for entry for bringing events to Manchester? So I've, I've touched on it a little bit in terms of um, the um, Team Manchester support that we give. So it's a real collaborative approach. So as a convention bureau, we are offering all sorts of support with bids, with delegate promotion, with um, planning in a, in a competitive environment. And we will bring in, you know, ourselves, the venue, we'll help around thought leadership. All of our venues are working very hard on sustainability, which we know is a real, a real buzzword within the industry at the moment. Yeah, really important. So our venues and hotels, they're all working hard on their sustainability. We've got a convention center in Manchester Central that is, you know, does that really, really well. Um, so we, we're investing heavily um, in terms of connectivity from the airport into Manchester. It's a walkable city, so you're not gonna lose any of your delegates once you're here. And because of the compactness of the city, it will feel like um, they're in a, they're in a networking space wherever they are. So that business can be done in bars and restaurants, you know, only a stone's throw from any venue that you're in in Manchester. The welcome that people will get in Manchester is, is really friendly. You know, the city, the city knows and expects um, that, venue, uh, that events are taking place and they're ready for it. So, you know, there's, there's all sorts of promotional discounts. There's, there's a really nice, warm city welcome. Um, and then, it's also about making sure that we as a convention bureau have got an enticing offer so that, you know, the city, talking about the city's vibrancy, talking about how easy it is to, once you're in Manchester, um, that within a five minute walk, there's 3,000 bedrooms. So there's no problem with capacity of the convention center. Within 15 minutes walk of the convention center, you've got 15,000 bedrooms. It's about them realizing that we're set up for events and that we will hold their hands every step of the way in terms of support. Great. Well, that would definitely ease uh, some event planners' minds. I mean, the last time I was up Manchester Way for an event, we actually did do a walking tour of the city, which was was amazing. And so, yeah, I could completely vouch for that. Yeah, and I should also mention as well, Jack, that we've got uh, we, recently we've had the development of the accommodation business improvement district, and that is allowing us to bring much more and, and attract much more high-profile global events. Um, and that's with, that offers us more funding um, for some of those events and resource to be able to bid for that larger stuff. And, and that, that ultimately will really put Manchester on the map and those events will leave really long-lasting impacts for the city. Brilliant. Well, thank you for joining me You're here welcome. today, Steph. Um, I'm sure we can put some details here below for people to get in contact and find out more about Manchester and all the upcoming developments. So for now, that's all from me and all from Steph. Thank you. And we hope you enjoy Confess.